Uh, Mr. Dave Prater, Vice President of Supercross. Uh, been around here a long time. How many A1s does this make for you now? Yeah, I've been around a while. This is uh, this is 24. So I started in 2000, so it's, it's easy to keep track of. There you go. That's a yeah. nice starting place. Uh, obviously, 2023 marked a, a huge year. Uh, inaugural Super Motocross World Championship playoffs, which mm -hmm. I thought went tremendously well. Um, now that you've ha had some time to reflect on how that went, were your thoughts overall? Did it live up to what you expected or even more? Yeah, no, I think it was fantastic. I don't think like going into it, we knew the potential it had and knew how big it could be. But I think it really, you know, just exceeded everyone's expectations and set us up for the future in a great way. So I think the sport's in a really good spot right now. I think everyone is communicating, everyone's working together all with the same goal. And, um, you know, I couldn't have been happier with what happened last year. So everyone's anticipating hearing where the new rounds will be, the playoff rounds for 2024. Uh, is that going to be at the press conference here on Friday at, at Anaheim? No, we're going to make everyone wait a little bit longer. Okay. Um, probably sometime mid Supercross season, we'll, we'll announce those. Um, still working on some of the details, but just a little, a little tease. We'll still go, it'll still be an East Coast round, uh, middle of the country round and, and a West Coast round and really excited about it, but don't want to let the, uh, don't want to let the secret out quite yet. Yeah. Well, without giving away what 2024 will be, do we have a, a dream round somewhere in three years, five years? You're like, if we could get there, that might be the, the pinnacle of where we could end up. I think, you know, there's a lot of dream rounds um, and we've talked to a lot of really unique places. So I'm hesitant to, <laughs> to bring those up because uh, I still believe they can happen. But um, if you just think about sporting venues, iconic sporting venues around the world, um, you know, we've had conversations with quite a few. And so, again, I'm tempted to let a few out of the bag, but uh, I still believe some are going to happen. So until they happen, I'll just I'll keep it, keep it uh, under my hat. But just know we're looking at options that I don't think anyone's really thought of. Um, just really unique, historic venues that have hosted other sports, but I don't think anyone's ever thought about bringing a super motocross race into. Well, it's exciting. Um, you know, with, I think everyone involved at Feld Entertainment deserves a round of applause for kind of taking it to this level, right? The collaboration between Feld and, and MX Sports and everybody to bring this together, Peacock. Um, it, it's really been a tremendous step forward for the sport. Uh, speaking of that, we've got some brand new superstars that are really kind of taking the stage here. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the future looks like you look at Jet Lawrence, you look at Hayden Deegan in the 250 class, and they look like they're the two kids, quote unquote, they're kind of ready to take this thing to the next level. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, I've been doing this a long time. You've been doing it a long time, JT. I think, you know, you, you look at Jeremy and you think no one could no one could ever be that good. And then Ricky comes along and then you're thinking the same thing about Ricky and then James and Chad and so on. And, and these guys really are, I believe that, you know, the next crop, especially with uh, Jet and Hayden up there. These guys really are generational talents and uh, they've got a ton of talent that's coming along with them. I mean, those two we talk about a lot, but you've got all kinds of just new young talent. And um, like I said before, I think the sport's in a great place. I think these young riders have grown up in the spotlight and in front of the camera. And so not only are they fantastic on the racetrack, but they're fantastic personalities. They're fantastic with social media and just, um, you know, putting out content for the fans, not only Saturday, but every day throughout the week. So um, I, I don't know um, what's next, but I'm super excited and feel really good about where the sport is. Well, speaking of that, I, you know, I think a lot of people look back on the Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, and Chad Reed era as being kind of the heyday, right? The, the racing was just so incredible. And now you look at what Jet can kind of bring to the table if Hayden gets in there while Jet's still there. But the most interesting part of that is we have Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart, part of that heyday era, talking about that and yeah. watching it unfold. Uh, so it's just, it's kind of like this little sidebar, but what an incredible kind of dynamic in, in this environment I don't think we've ever had before. You've got the best ever doing the broadcast, and then you've got all this young talent that's ready to kind of take us to the next step. Yeah, no, I agree. And you, I, I never really thought about that, but you're right. You had these two guys and James and Ricky that were incredible to watch and battled every weekend. And now you've got them taking us 
into the heads of these guys as they start their professional careers. And, and like you said, I'm sure Hayden, he's not there yet. They're not racing together yet, but it'll be soon. And to have Jet and Hayden and Hunter and, and all these young guys um, move up and, and battle. And we've got two legends that lived it themselves on the track explaining what it's like to be down there because they lived it themselves. So it's a little bit different topic. Um, I had the opportunity to ride an electric motorcycle a year and a half ago. Um, interesting experience, right? I just don't know how that fits in, where that fits in. I even had that conversation with the manufacturer there. Is that something that's in conversations here? Do you ever see that working its way into to Monster Energy Supercross? I mean, I, I think electric's the future. I don't think there's any denying that. Um, I'm excited about it. I think it it's going to open up motorcycling to a whole new generation. Um, I can go, I can live in a suburb and buy an electric motorcycle and ride it out, ride it down the street without upsetting, upsetting my neighbors. Um, so I think it's gonna be huge. I don't necessarily think that it's a good idea until maybe sometime in the future to mix the combustion engines and electric motorcycles. But I think there's definitely something, and you know, we're constantly talking to the OEMs about what we can do. Um, there's definitely something that um, will happen, I would say in the future, the near future, around electric and supercross. Um, again, I don't believe they'll be on the same racetrack as a gas powered motorcycle, but as a part of the event in some way, shape or form, both supercross and motocross and SMX in general, um, I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah, and, and to speaking to that, you look at all the other OEM involvement, right? Triumph will make their debut this season. Ducati looks like they're on the way. Um, it looks to me like it's the healthiest time this sport's ever seen. Uh, where you know, we're new markets, and we've got this great Peacock partnership with all sorts of new viewership and ways to stream it. When I think about it, sit back and look, what do you think 10 years is gonna look like from now, right? If we're sitting here in, in 2034 at Anaheim One, what does the sport look like? Man, it's hard to say. I, uh, I agree with you. I think we're in an incredible place. I don't know that we've ever been this healthy. We've been healthy for a while, but it feels like all the stars are aligning. Um, like we said before, you've got fellow motorsports, MX Sports, the AMA, AMA Pro, um, our partnership with Peacock, and they, they couldn't be more supportive um, from the top level down. They love Super Motocross and love what we bring um, to their platform. So 10 years from now is hard. Um, <laughs> my crystal ball broke years ago, but I think we're in a really good spot and we just need to continue to capitalize on all these opportunities and take it to the next level. And I've got no doubt with everyone that's involved that we will. Well, as a fan, first and foremost, you know, I was out here racing once upon a time, but now I truly am a fan, right? And uh, we live and die with these things. I just want to say thank you. Um, these things don't happen without great leadership. And I know you have a giant team that's all working on these things, but uh, it does mean a lot to the fans that the sport is so healthy these days. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that, but you're right. It's not, it's not me at all. I've got an incredible team and MX Sports and their team and just really everyone involved. Uh, it takes an army to do this. And, uh, Thank you, thank you and the broadcast team for all that you do. So right. looking forward to it, man. It's gonna be an exciting year and exciting future. Cool, thanks, Dave. Awesome, thanks.